How's it going, Bat Family and Flash Family, if you will, because today is a news roundup video. So today we're covering some DCEU news with the Flash movie, and yes, you, you've probably already guessed it, we're talking about the Ben Affleck Batman that has been spotted, even though it's a stunt double, so technically it's not Ben Affleck because he seems to be doing uh, other things, which I'm sure you've also maybe heard about as well. But anyway, we've also got the Bat girl casting to talk about in the latter half of this video so it will be time stamped it's kind of easy to follow because it's just the video split into two but yeah in case you couldn't tell already i love batman i love the flash on this channel so i've got quite a bit to say so let's first actually talk about ben affleck's batman suiting up in the flash movie because those photos have most definitely surfaced online and as you can probably tell there's a good page for following it in case you want some little tidbit updates the flash film news you can probably see me on the screen in the corner somewhere right now whilst i'm showing the twitter page i want to show the twitter page because they're giving credit to all the people who are posting these photos so credit should be on the page's screen as you're seeing it but yeah i mean look at all of these photos that we're seeing now from the flash movie with ben affleck's batman and ben affleck's batman i remember making videos on this when articles were coming out that ben affleck will be in a movie michael geaton will be in a movie but still there was nothing mega 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 concrete and actually most of the fandom were believing uh, up until a point and even i was to be fair because it's like how much is ben affleck going to be in it and that is is he really even going to suit up will we just see him in his bruce wayne attire to kind of just show the audience the the the, the, the variety of what they're about to see in a flash movie that is doing a low-key adaptation of flashpoint and that is obviously i guess you may as well chuck ben affleck's bruce wayne in there so the audience the general audience know hey that's the bruce wayne i saw in batman versus superman and justice league but also hey you're now diving into the multiverse, or Barry is, and now there's Keaton. But it seems we're getting a lot more of a treat than that, because as you can see here, there's a high-speed chase. And not only that, we're introduced to another piece of bat tech, if you will, and that is the bat bike. It's not a piece of bat tech, it's a bat vehicle, but you could argue there's some tech on it, so it's technically bat tech. But but really, as you're seeing here, where we see the stunt double. Let me just get that out of the way as well. That's not actually Ben Affleck. He's, as I said, doing other things. <laughs> right now but obviously he doesn't need to be here to do this if if you have a stunt person who can fit in the same suit and just do it for you you do that do you know what i mean but obviously ben affleck will be filming scenes for this movie but right now just for all intents and purposes this is meant to be ben affleck's batman if you couldn't tell already through the aesthetic of the actual bat bike here matching up perfectly to the Snyder versus Batmobile. I mean, if you couldn't tell already, this is obviously Ben Affleck's bat bike, which is very interesting because we're getting two bat bikes in 2022 from Robert Pattinson's The Batman with having Matt Reeves' movie in Batman one year, six months in. So in year two, he's got his little bat ears on the bike. I love that. It's more of a raw newbie Batman. Whereas with Ben Affleck's, it's not necessarily the opposite, but he's a veteran Batman and they seem to be going for more of the Batman White Knight bike. I mean, in, in fact, it's more or less a spitting image of it with subtle differences, but it's definitely an homage and tribute to Batman White Knight. I'm sure you're seeing that on screen as well. But yeah, as for what is actually going on in this high-speed chase, I couldn't necessarily tell you. I'm not going to pretend to be omniscient, but my best guess would be, and this is just maybe something like whether it's at the beginning of the movie or when maybe Barry goes to see Bruce maybe before running back in time. He's running through Gotham City, but before like we pick up with Barry running in Gotham City, it picks up with Batman, a day in the life of, of Ben Affleck's Bruce Wayne, basically doing his thing, like out in the city, chasing someone down, and then maybe Barry runs in, helps him, that would be really cool. But obviously, there's so many moving parts, I have no idea if that little scene in my head is the case. But no matter what, I think it'd be really cool if, let's just say, they cut to Gotham City location, and then, it, you know, we don't follow the Flash for like two minutes, we're following Batman, Ben Affleck's Batman, on a piece of Bat vehicle that we haven't seen from the Snyderverse before, even though it fits up beautifully to the Batmobile, goes in, chases this armored car, typical Batman night in Gotham City business, and then it's like, hey Barry, I haven't seen you since Justice League. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm obviously joking, but yeah, maybe a situation like that. But ultimately, as for the suit, now, we can't 
really tell how different it is because this is a stunt double so the padding that we see on there could very well indeed just be stunt padding but I do believe I wouldn't be surprised if there are slight differences on this armored suit I mean obviously we've seen Snyder himself give Ben Affleck's Batman quite the armor padded version uh, in Justice League as well and this seems to be following suit with a, a very armored Batman which you know does make sense if he's on a freaking bat bike and maybe he's in a high speed chase I mean you want to be protected not only when riding a bike, but especially if you're the Batman, I suppose. But I swear there's subtle extra pieces of padding. It's kind of hard to tell. Uh, you know, these, these photos are really decent. But at the same time, you know, it, it's obvious enough to make out that it's Ben Affleck's Batman. But the little differences here and there, I guess we're not going to be able to properly tell until we see, uh, you know, actual close-ups in the movie. Overall, I, I just appreciate it. I don't know how much, obviously... Ben Affleck is going to have in terms of screen time in this movie. I do think and I do wonder about quite a lot when it comes to this movie. If this is like what a few people have been talking about in terms of Ben Affleck's appearance as the Batman. Could this be their way of writing him out? Like he was like, sure, yeah. Oh, Peter, do I have to do too much? No, no, maybe. If I don't have to do too many scenes, yeah, I'll come in. And maybe because of the Flashpoint adaptation that is going on in this movie, and that's what got to lead into the Batgirl discussion we're going to have in a minute, then, you know, it could be a way to phase out his Batman, whether he dies or just kind of gets rewritten with Keaton kind of going on in the DCEU moving forward with also the introduction and changes made Made from Flashpoint introducing Sasha Kelly's Supergirl and yes you guessed it the new Batgirl but yeah it just feels good to be talking about some updated Bat content it would be cool to see Keaton out there in the streets I suppose in the actual Bat suit another thing I might as well mention whilst I think about it this is obviously shot in the daytime so it's kind of weird to see a Gotham City in daytime with Ben Affleck's Batman out on his new Gotham White Knight Bat freaking bike. Yeah, again, just wanted to throw this out there. They could make it nighttime in post-production as well. I'm not sure if this is actually meant to be daytime, but I think we need to now talk about Batgirl because I haven't spoken about the Batgirl casting and it's just interesting. There's not too much to say. Or oh, while well, this is me, Boba talks. I can talk. <laughs> so yeah, Batgirl has been cast. Now, the, the interesting thing lies in quite a few factors here. So Leslie Grace is playing the next Barbara Gordon on HBO Max's exclusive Batgirl film. Now, you may have heard there was a short list of actors. I can't remember from the top of my head who they were. I didn't know that Leslie Grace would be the one. But what I want to say is with all the concepts, I have no quarrels with it. I know already there's going to be people screaming about race bending. Why aren't they screaming about Jeffrey Wright's race bend then, for example? I, look, I'm not going to get into that political talk. But for me, I have no quarrels with Leslie Grace landing the role of, you know, Batgirl. Now we have a Latina Supergirl. We have a Latina Batgirl. I am very happy for Sasha Kelly. If you've been watching my update videos on the Flash movie, you know already my perspective on Sasha Kelly. I think she looks great. And now Leslie Grace is going to be the Batgirl, uh, who is also Latina. And this is obviously good for representation in the movie side of things because we've had it on TV side I believe you know for example we've got I believe yet Yvette Montreal who plays Wildcat and Stargirl and they're leaning into her Latina roots on that but now obviously in the DCEU they, they kind of want the face to big names like Batgirl with this kind of casting. Full transparency here I haven't really seen Leslie Grace in anything I look up her IMDB and I think her big big breakout role was in the Heights now I have no idea really what that is but <laughs> I'm not going to judge until I see the performance. I do trust the casting decision because at the end of the day, I, I, I mean, I suppose I could be wrong there, but I just think you'd be crazy to miscast in, in a role like this. So the, let's discuss the, I, I would say, arguably bigger news, which, you know, big news is Leslie Grace landing the role of Barbara Gordon, obviously, and as Batgirl. But I think we need to talk about what is going on here. What is this movie connected to and why? Is it an HBO Max exclusive? Because that is the weird thing, since this is a movie. Because don't forget, if you're going to put it on HBO Max, 
you, you would assume on paper, oh yeah, if it's going to HBO Max, this could be like a series, like a maybe even a limited series of Batgirl, or maybe if it does really well, they're not going to say if it's a limited series, they would do like a second season, but no, it's not even a limited series, it's a movie. So then you would think to yourself, why would they put an HBO, a, a movie on HBO Max exclusive to HBO Max, especially with the Batgirl brand, why wouldn't you put that in the theatres? Because that's like a big... It's a big IP. It's like, why wouldn't you do that? But I think we can all guess, like, maybe it's just because HBO Max really want to do this because they want those subscribers. So I just find it fascinating. It is kind of weird. I get why they would be doing it. The only logical explanation is to make an exclusive to HBO Max is to drive subscriptions. But yeah, it's just bad girl. They could make a lot of box office numbers with that at the same time. But I suppose they're really going ham into subscription. They could have done something like, for example, we've got the Batman movie with Matt Reeves going into a trilogy, but we also have a HBO Max show, which as far as we're aware, it's a limited prequel. It's a limited series because it's a year one show. It's, it's set during Batman year one, which in the Batman movie, we're in year two, one year, six months in, and in the Gotham PD show going to HBO Max, that is indeed when Bruce is in his first 12 months. We don't know if it's two months in, four Four months, six months. We can guess it's a few months in because obviously the synopsis of the Gotham PD show details that this vigilante is causing unrest. So yeah, I'm guessing it's like at least a quarter into the first year of Batman. But that's not what we're talking about. I'm just saying like they could have done something like that. But yeah, I mean, as for connections, let's talk about connections. I know you could say, but she she could be Jeffrey Wright's daughter. I know what you're saying, but I I it's, I think it's very, very obvious that this isn't in Matt Reeves' universe. That is very much so, and it's been articulated by the director, Matt Reeves himself, its very own little thing in his pocket universe on Earth 2. This makes the most sense with the restructuring, reshuffling, all of this stuff they're doing with the DCEU, that it would be set post the Flash movie, because don't forget that the Flash movie is the best excuse to completely not wipe everything, but... I guess wipe everything, but put the things you wanted out of the previous DCU on the screen. Get rid of some things that are on the screen, maybe like David Ayer's Suicide Squad. They're going to maybe remove that from canon. I'm not guaranteeing this, but I'm just saying it gives them the perfect blank slate to organize things that they want. It could like take Ben Affleck out of the picture, for example, and they could bring in Keaton as what has been rumored for a long time as this kind of grandfather kind of mentor role. And yeah, bring in characters like Supergirl, which is very obvious, like with what changes Barry's making to the timeline, even if he tries to really reset it as much as he can. They're there will be fixed repercussions in this new DCEU moving forward and one of those will be the introduction of Supergirl and yeah I'm guessing also Batgirl. I think she's going to be a post Flashpoint thing. Something that has inadvertently come out of his changes during this movie. There's also just a lot of obvious common sense reasons as to why this Batgirl wouldn't be linked to Jeffrey Wright or Matt Reeves's The Batman Gordon for example because it's just like, do you really think they would announce a Batgirl casting and a movie for a, a Batman movie that hasn't even come out yet with a Robert Pattinson Bruce who is barely able to look after himself at this point in time and let alone take on a Robin or a Batgirl? Uh, it, there's just lots of reasons. And, and Gordon isn't even commissioner in the Batman movie. Like, do you see what I mean? There's lots of reasons why this doesn't add up. So I just want to iron that out there. I can't promise you for a fact, but I can next to almost guarantee you that it's not connected. So I hope that says something to all the people who really think that she's going to be Jeffrey Rice's daughter. And that's about it. So I would love to know your thoughts, guys. What do you think of Ben Affleck not only being in the Flash movie like we all kind of knew already, but are you very happy? Because did you think he would just be in Bruce Wayne suited up and tie all the way to the top mode? But now you see that he's on a freaking Gotham White Knight bat bike kind of situation in a high-speed chase. So we know there's going to be kind of a cinematic kind of montage -y situation going on there. And also, what do you think of the Batgirl casting? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I love to read every single one of them. And if you're further interested in talking with me outside the comments section and outside these YouTube videos, I do have a Discord server. And also, I do encourage you to follow me on my most active social media, which is Twitter. And I do have other pages in a top pin comment, which links to my Patreon and other places like Instagram. But, ladies and gentlemen, that is, that is it for today's update video. Bit of a rambly session, but it was enjoyable covering some movie news today. And yeah, just let me know your thoughts, and I'll see all of you Bat Family in the next video. Goodbye.